free to let me know. I'll do my best to answer them. So we're currently leaving at an elevation of 6,559 feet. We're going to be going up almost 4,000 feet to 10,378 feet. We'll be traveling a distance of 2.7 miles at a speed of 13.7 miles an hour, and that's going to get us to the top in about 15 minutes. Do we have any first-time tram riders with us today? They're here. Uh, awesome. <laughs> Me too, folks. <laughs> I see in the house. <laughs> a little bit of history about our tram here. Construction started in 1964 and lasted two years until 1966. It cost about $2 million at the time to complete this. Today, that'd be roughly equivalent to about $40 million. And you are riding the world's second longest aerial tramway. You have to go no all the way to Armenia no in West Asia to find one longer than this one. That one's about three quarters of a mile longer. In a second here, we're going to pass over a hiking trail. That's actually what's left of a service road that was used to build the first tower in the 1960s. When it was completed, the first tower was the tallest structure in New Mexico at 230 feet tall. It leans towards Albuquerque at a grade of 18 degrees. That's about twice as much as the leaning tower of Pisa in Italy. You can't guess, it's called the Blue Tower Trail. Hey. 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 There will be a little swing and sway of the cabin as we go over this tower. No, we're back here. We here like to say that it looks kind of like a golf ball ready to tee up. Not too sure how true that is, but we go with it anyway. We call it golf ball rock, and it's actually more than two times the size of the cabin you're riding in right now. And if you look up ahead of us to the right a bit, you'll see a big oval shaped rock on its side with a squiggly line right through it. If you use your imagination, you can sort of pick out eyes, lips, and a fin on there. We call that fish rock, or I personally like three story dory, as it's about three stories from the bottom to the top. Where is it? And if you follow this canyon on our left up a ways, you'll start to be able to make out what appears to be a big stack of rocks up there. That's actually one solid piece of granite that has eroded to look like that over the years. It's called Totem Pole Pinnacle. It stands about seven stories tall. And in a minute or two here, we're going to pass right over an area that looks kind of like a rock slide. That's actually the only spot on the tram's journey where they had to alter a side of the mountain in order to complete construction. They could have built the towers higher to accommodate for a need to pass over this spot, but they decided that wasn't nearly as much fun as blowing up with dynamite, so that's what they did. And as we're getting higher, you'll start to notice the terrain changing. We left from the high desert in Albuquerque, and we'll be going all the way up to high elevation, where we're at the top. The light zones you pass through on this journey are actually about the same ones you would see if you were to drive up the Pacific coast from San Diego all the way to British Columbia. And you'll start to notice a lot of dead trees on the sides of the hills here. That was actually due to a bark beetle infestation we had back in the day. And paired with New Mexico's dry climate, it made it almost impossible for those trees to come back. But thankfully, the bark beetles aren't in the area anymore. They moved up to Colorado. <laughs> And you'll notice there are no service roads up to this second tower. They couldn't build any roads up these rocky cliffs, so they actually built a little bit of a tower. And there's 5,000 helicopter flights. Wow. 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 Wow.
And the technical name of the tramway system you're riding on right now is a double reversal aerial jigback tramway, which is just a big fancy brace for one big loop of cable that goes from the bottom to the top and back again. So as, uh, as it pulls us up, it pulls the other tram car down at the same speed since we're located on the same cable. So we're going to cross them at the halfway point. Que ya hasta aquí llegamos y nos devolvemos. Oh, Está más fácil. No mames, era parece que vamos a pegar las piedras, ¿no? Once again, as we go over this tower, there will be a little swing and sway at the cabin. And Mira, if you wey, don't no come, you're afraid of heights. You're probably about oh, to find out. No mames, güey. Mira, no mames, güey. Hey, 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 hey. Mira para acá, para abajo, bro, nomás, mira. And you can now see our system yeah, no that we're approaching up in front of us. Vamos a llegar hasta allá, buena. And we're now entering the first of three canyons we're going to pass over on our journey. They got really extra creative with the name of this first canyon. And they saw that it was big and it was a canyon. So they decided that they should call it Big Canyon. <laughs> Once again, as we pass this tram car, it does mark the halfway point of our journey. They're actually not the same speed. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to slow down here for a minute to allow our sister tram car to go over that tower. Don't slow down. We are keeping the furthest point from the ground that we will be during our journey. It's about 900 feet straight down. Some of my co-workers like to measure that as a seven second drop. No, but a nicer way to look at it is you can slide the Eiffel Tower underneath us, or you could be standing on the observation deck of the Empire State Building. <laughs> 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 So there are a lot of wildlife in the mountains here. The Sandias are home to about 150 species of birds, including the golden eagle, peregrine falcon, red-tailed hawk, and white-birded swift. Due to keep your eyes peeled for any large mammals we might see on our way, we do occasionally see things like black bears, mountain lions, mule bear, bobcats, chupacabra, bigfoot, jackalope. And we're now entering the second of the Canyon we'll pass over. This one is my personal favorite. It's called Echo Canyon. And if you look out to the left, you'll notice it's really green and lush in this canyon. And that's because a spring feeds it year round, running down from the top of the mountain. So the trees in this canyon are actually between 100 and 150 feet tall. Wow. <laughs> And as we're getting higher, you'll start to notice kind of a reddish hue to these mountains here. That's actually from the general of the red, called Fort the Clay Smelts Park. And if you've ever experienced a sunset in Albuquerque, you'll know that sometimes when the sun is setting behind the West Mesa, it'll hit these mountains and make them glow a bright pink color due to that mineral. So when the Spanish were exploring the area, they saw the bright pink rocks and the green trees, and they said, hey, that kind of looks like a big piece of watermelon. So they decided to call these the Sandia Mountains. Sandia is Spanish for watermelon. And apparently the Spanish at the time had something to spread. Because if you look out to the right of the cabin, you'll see a more distant mountain range beyond that ridge there. Those are called the Manzano Mountains. Manzano is Spanish for apple or apple tree. Suerte que la vuelta orange, um, what are the orange cliffs or the cables? Cables and plates. And they also paint uh, um, when we're docked, the hall cable kind of has a bunch of slack in it. So they keep it from hanging down too much and they kind of make it do little swoops instead of hanging down. And 
Mingo going over the last of the three canyons. Oh, Luis has to go over. This is the Mingo Baca Canyon. <laughs> 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 So the cable span we're riding on right now from that second tower to the top of the mountain is actually the fourth longest aerial tramway cable span in the world. The ones longer than this one are located in Venezuela, Switzerland, and France. So from the top of the mountain, you'll be able to see about 11,000 square miles of New Mexico in every direction. That's about 9% of our entire state. Or it's kind of like seeing an area of land the same size as the entire state of Connecticut on one side of the mountain and the entire state of Massachusetts on the other. Uh, that brand new, yes, that was the old, uh, the building itself, I believe, was completed like two or three months ago, and the restaurant just opened about a month ago. And this is my mom, my sister. Yeah. I know. Yeah, No, mom, I'm going to get a lot of a lot of Uh, yeah, I think they did use to at some point. I don't know exactly what that is. Uh, yes, yeah, so that one is... Uh, uh, yeah, so that one is... Uh, uh, so if we do have any smokers on board, there is only one designated smoking area on top of the mountain. It'll be located on the north side of the upper terminal, and we do ask you please keep your smoking there if you would. Our mountain has already caught fire once this year, and we'd like to keep that number at just once if we can. Uh, and if we're not used to the higher elevations up here, we would recommend you take it a little bit easy for the first little bit. Make sure you drink plenty of water to allow your body to acclimate to these altitudes. For you, Snacks and vending machines up at the top. Tramps down will be running every 15 to 30 minutes, all the way until about 10:30 tonight. So feel free to spend your whole evening up here if you like. There will be a couple of bumps as we're coming in the dock. It's kind of like docking a boat. If you've ever done that? You've done it. Any first one will be any second now. Probably. Yeah. Oh no! Jesus Christ! <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ! 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 Jesus